It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week, we take a return to Middle Earth. Mike, we're going there and back again. A story. You know what? Uh, I think all of our Lord of the Rings conversations are going to be hilarious to me, because I know okay. so little uh, I just it, I, I already have an anecdote about just what is literally the middle of this earth and I've learned more things in this uh, in this new Lord of the Rings show that I'm sure lots of fans out there are like what are you yeah. talking about how did you not know this already so we'll yeah. have fun when well, we talk about that and I think it's going to be better because I don't know anything about the other show uh, <laughs> that has a similar vibe so I think this is going to be great for us um, D23 casting rumors for Marvel are what dreams are made of, Mike. This is uh, a yes. hot rumor this week, and God, I hope some of it's... Even if some of it's true, we still come out ahead. The D23. next big convention, Comic-Con Part 2, as we were calling it earlier, is yes. finally coming. Yes. And that is next week, uh, by the way, so mm-hmm. we'll talk more about that in a little bit. DC's fandom is canceled. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> I am surprised to nobody. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery has decided to just get rid of fandom, and that's okay because literally they've pushed everything back uh, so far that nothing. If they should add a fandom this year, it would be the same stuff they showed last year, right? Like literally, Black Adam is maybe the only movie on track so far, and that's because The Rock is a single promotion man for that show. So, <laughs> um, you know, good for him. So yeah, and more. Yeah, I think Warner Brothers' stock price is low enough now where The Rock could probably just liquidate all of his assets and just purchase mm. uh, Warner Brothers. That would be really funny. Yeah, yeah and then he could just like uh, tweet out marketing campaigns, and you know they'd save a lot of dough there. But today we are recording on a U.S. holiday known as Labor Day, also mm-hmm. a bank holiday, a public school holiday. I don't know what private kids do, private kids schools do on this day, but I would assume they're off too. Uh, so we decided probably to off wait more and... than the right the public school kids. So <laughs> yeah, yeah probably. So. I don't know. We've been we've been rewatching Gilmore Girls, which is like mm-hmm. half of the plots are about private school, and mm-hmm. it's just like uh, it's just like a weird world. I don't know what they do. I feel like there's always like cloak cloaks and candles and like uh, seances. Well, it always seems very a... like cryptic and like hot fuzz, you know. Well, if you don't want like if you don't have access to film in a classroom and you don't want to do like normal school stuff, just say it's a private school and you make up what you want as you go, right? Like that's true. We're in private that's school. True. Our curriculum only, is whatever it is. We have D and D at four. We do all we need is a building that has like stone walls because I feel like that's where all these uh, private schools on the East Coast look like. They're always like old abandoned mm-hmm. like churches or cathedrals. So that's probably oh, yeah. like the vibe I'm going for here with the occult type of vibes. But anyway, it's mm-hmm. Labor Day, which uh, some might consider the unofficial end of summer. And pools are closing, all- folks. Yes, exactly. And as we all know, the seasons here in the United States where Hollywood is located for the longest time has kind of set the pace for pop culture, like when it's come to TV and movie release schedules. But, you know, like we've been talking about like the last like five or six years that we've been doing this podcast, those schedules are slowly getting thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that's really held true really I would say is like the June July window for those really big yeah. movies but even the Marvel mm-hmm. movies have moved closer to that April like, release so well, really I think yeah. truly the only thing that has withstood the test of uh, these shifting sands of time would be that December movie right they they always know yeah, that the, the that, that big that big holiday is going to be there so as we wait here for Avatar uh, to chime mm-hmm. in uh, that big movie schedule. Now we're just kind of at the end of summer, so we're just kind of waiting to see what comes our way. And well, uh, streaming's yeah. kind of been filling that hole, I feel like. <laughs> well, I think that, and, and just to be to be clear, our first three topics are within a week of each other, right? Or two weeks maybe mm-hmm. at most. So literally it's quote unquote fall TV time without it actually being, you know, you're not turning over the air you're not going to cable these are things that you can watch streaming uh, instantly but it is like all within like one to two weeks of each other so it's very <laughs> yeah 
Interesting. Yeah, it is strange. Like, I feel like there's a psychology to determine the release of anything nowadays, right? You know, if it's mm-hmm. summertime, you can say, oh, yeah, you got to release Stranger Things during summertime, right? Like, nobody's in school. Everybody's got nothing but time to kill. Like, uh, you know, it's hot outside. Go inside and watch Stranger Things. But then you could say, well, no, it's a bad idea. Everyone's on vacation. Where they, where, where the hell are they going to sit down and watch TV? Now that school's back in session. Wait, oh, I, I, <laughs> I schedule my vacation around Stranger Things, Mike. I, I'm not going anywhere once, they, yes, once exactly. they give me that release date. But but as I say this, we'll talk more about the differences and the similarities mm-hmm. between uh, Rings of Power and House of uh, Dragon. But I feel like anyone that is at an age where they are dictated uh, by a school schedule uh, you might not be in the appropriate age category for House of Dragons. Uh, so <laughs> that could be a little bit of a, a misnomer there. But anyway, uh, end of summer, going into fall, uh, we have decorated our place uh, fall style. Uh, we got pumpkins and gourds out the wazoo. Uh, yep. We got uh, scented candles all around the place. So we got the fall vibes here. But as I was telling Chris earlier before we hit the record button. It is blazing hot here in Southern California. It has been over 100 degrees for, I think, like the last four or five days, and we got a few more days ahead of us. So we are melting, 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 which has been making me retreat indoors and download free games on my PlayStation. So yes. I have went ahead and I downloaded the 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 it, it's for all intents and purposes it's a new right Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two so it's not it's not like they did a graphical polish they like rebuilt the whole game right it it is uh, I don't I don't know I actually bought this for Xbox when it came out year year and a half ago mm-hmm. um, and it plays a lot like the originals because I have the originals as well to play mm-hmm. side by side but like. I would say it's a remaster akin to what they're doing with, like, Last of Us. Like, there's similar animations. There's similar... All the levels are familiar, but, it, you know, it's lacking some of the originals of, like, the Mountain Dew tokens, I think, are gone, right? <laughs> um, some some of that, uh, you know, stuff, the licensing stuff from back then are, are taken out, and it feels just a yeah. little smoother than it did. Yeah, come on, dude. You can't get that uh, sponsorship dollars back in the they, game? They're, they're cranking out flavors left and right. I mean, put it in the... <laughs> I'd, I'd play any game that had Mountain Dew tokens in it. They, they had to move their uh, sponsorship budget to their R&D budget, apparently. But my only anecdote for this game uh, right now is I have not played a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game, and if I had to guess, it could honestly be two decades, 20 years since mm-hmm. I have put my fingers to the controller to do a kickflip or a grind or a nose grab or what have you. So uh, it gave me the option while the game was still installing to where I could go to the tutorial or I could go directly to the warehouse. I was like, well, I'm just going to go to the warehouse because I don't feel like dealing with prompts for telling me how to do things. So I drop into the warehouse and I couldn't believe it, Chris. My mm-hmm. hands remembered exactly yes. what to do which is so strange because this isn't like picking up like a first person shooter where they're pretty much all operate under the same premise where you can assume the right trigger is going to be your your gun your left trigger is probably going to be a grenade or something of that sort and you're either like clicking a control stick or you're hitting like the square or circle button to melee right uh, yeah. those have th- those apply to so many video games out there in the world but there's only a very small number of skateboarding games right and I could not believe that my thing, my fingers just remembered exactly where Ollie was, where Grind was, how to do all of this stuff. Mm. There's a few minor things that like I forgot, but I was just like shocked. It was like literally the euphemism of like riding a bike. You never forget how to do it, but it just happens to be a skateboard. <laughs> so if it, uh, this will just be a small PSA oh, yeah. of like if you felt like you've been kept out of the skateboarding genre because it's been a while since you've been in it, man, you you picked that up real quick. So I was just oh, fascinated. Yeah. It was it was wild. Yeah. So that I, was what I yeah. got up to over the weekend. Yeah, I, I mean, I like I said, I bought it when it came out because I, I love one and two, right? The soundtracks alone are worth the price of admission. Mm-hmm. And even if you got these back then, I think they were like still forty dollars. They weren't full price games. Um, but to get one and two, all the tracks, um, multiplayer is really fun, right? You you do the was it the horse mode or the tag mode where you try to grind on as many things or do as many tricks, you know, to get higher points than the other person is really fun. Uh, but like you said, it's all about the nostalgia factor. This is a really good remaster that takes you immediately back to the late 90s, your N64, your PlayStation 1 versions of these games, right? That You're just in the zone and listening to Goldfinger Superman because all, you know, 
all you want to do is listen to that soundtrack over and over and over again um, mm-hmm. for that. So 100% agree with you. I, th- I think it's fantastic. Um, I, on the other hand, uh, have been dipping into retro games. Uh, I, I've been sending you bits of this, but I, I, I'm, I'm now part of a quote-unquote collective uh, called Rad Retro Bros, Mike. Uh, I was going to put this in here. Uh, with my friends Matt and John, and, and of course there's other people uh, involved, but you know we're the we're the big three. Matt and John are actual brothers. I'm uh, quote unquote an adopted brother, if you will. But Matt um, and John, Matt actually buys arcades, um, buys retro games, has a huge collection. We actually did some unboxing videos. I'm going to be editing coming up here on like um, you ever played Zombies Ain't My Neighbors back back in the uh, familiar yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh you did that um the new teenage mutant ninja turtles cowabunga collection has 13 tmnt t tmnt games on it um from arcade to nes super nintendo uh, even some sega and game boy stuff and some other stuff so um you know when you talk about old games taking you back I, i'm like that is, that is like my right now i'm just drinking from that kool-aid like of, of old games like i need something and that's that's keeping me inside because not I, I, we're not having heat like you are here in the Midwest. I'm having unpredictable rainstorms, so I don't know mm-hmm. if I can go outside or not because I'm about to, am I about to get poured on or not. So, hundred uh, uh, percent agree with you there. Uh, and just a little PSA for everyone before we jump into the show notes here, we are going to be recording next Monday. Um, and we will be recording Monday night and putting it out rather than uh, Sunday uh, due to some scheduling conflicts we have. However. We promise it will be a really good episode because of its of D twenty three being next weekend, and um, yeah, we're we're going to be covering that in in full detail, Mike. Uh, yes, it'll be so. a great recap. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be here getting into it. Yes, yes, hundred uh, percent. Just letting everybody know now. Uh, we've had to record Mondays more this year than we've ever had to record bef- Mondays before, but um, we're we're trying our best here. We're 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 doing doing our best for people. So let's jump into. Some, some some shows here. I think probably one of the the most I think anticipated shows, right, um, of this year in terms of budget, size, scale, and IP, uh, and that's the Lord of the Rings: The Rings of Power uh, on Amazon Prime. Uh, this is so big. I've seen Amazon trucks in my neighborhood with Lord of the Rings uh, marketing on the side of those Amazon Prime trucks, Mike. That's how big this is getting, and I and I, I bet you're used to that out in LA probably more than I am. Uh, mm-hmm. here in the Midwest. So to see that is very interesting uh, uh, going up yeah. in our neighborhood. Yeah, it's crazy how much is on the line it feels like for Amazon for Rings of Power. I know these are just kind of insider reports, so you have to take them with a grain of salt, but there has been chattering out there that Amazon is putting kind of the entire future of their Amazon Prime video service on the shoulders of the success of this show, right? And it sounds a little silly at first when you think about it because obviously they have big hits like The Boys, they have like huge uh, Emmy Award winners like Marvelous Miss Maisel, and also mm. we enjoyed um, uh, Invincible. Uh, so they're kind of starting to build out this adult kind of animation side of things over there as well. But when you learn that the budget per episode on this series is twice as expensive as the most expensive like game of thrones episode out there and i've seen those numbers thrown all around too all you all you can do is just average all of the wild numbers you've seen and you still yeah. arrive at it incredibly expensive to make this show yeah. so there's so much on the line that like whether or not I was a Lord of the Rings fan or not, of course I'm going to watch it because I want to see what all this money looks like on the screen. Yeah. I mean, uh, you and I, uh, obviously we have Amazon Prime because we're yeah. online. We shop. We want that uh, next day, two day, free shipping, however we want to get it. So this almost feels more free to me even yeah. than Netflix or anything else feels free to me. Well, H- which- HBO Max, right? You have to go out of your way. Uh, for some people to get that, right? Yes. Uh, and this it, is just a tack on, like, oh, I guess I've already got it. Let's go watch it. Yes. Kind of so uh, lo- long story short, of course, uh, we watched it. We were looking forward to it. But I think as Chris and I uh, maybe were alluding to at the top of the show, uh, we're not huge, like, Tolkien fans. Like, well, you, I, I, I think you know more than I do. Yeah. But I wouldn't say we're, like, at the level where we're going to be doing, like, a spinoff podcast yeah. where we're going to be doing Tolkien talks. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like I, I know enough to be dangerous about this. You know, I've I've read the books. You know, I've watched the movies, watched the extended editions. You know, read synop- uh, synopsis online. Uh, tried to you know follow along more than I would Game of Thrones or any of those, simply because I think the 
the longevity of Lord of the Rings and how immersed it is. Like, right, there's Led Zeppelin songs that, that reference Lord of the Rings. It's in everything. There's video games. You name it, this, this property has touched it at, at this point. So to me, you know, I'm a little more ingrained with it, a little more down with, you know, its production. It's also a movie series, right? This is the first Lord of the Rings TV foray compared to... And I'm not. I'm not going to compare these. You know, apples for apples. Lord of the or Game of Thrones, which has only been TV shows, right? Like it's never had movies. It's never had a theatrical release. So uh, for the Rings of Power, you know, Amazon to have this, which is not technically tied to the Lord of the Rings movie universe directly, but I feel they are moving towards that a little bit. Um, you know, at least referencing it without directly saying it, because we have. You know, we watched this. I've watched it, the first episode. I'm not going to see the second one yet um, this this weekend. But you know, there are names and locations dropped all over this that I'm very familiar with, right? Yeah, and I feel e- like it'll be. A I'm little... not like reading all the books all the time. Yeah, and I feel like it'll be a little bit of a learning curve. I think for media in general, for just how to talk about either Rings of Power or even House of Dragons, because these are prequels with kind of material that already exists out there in the world. I mean, I have the exact same itch in the back of my brain when I'm watching these two shows of, oh, I could just go online and Google like who these people are or who they are alluding they are to be, and I could just get my answer right now, but I feel like the show is wanting me not to do that so I can maybe be a little bit more surprised down the line. Uh, I'm always looking for like, okay, I feel like this could be like a grandfather or like a great, great ancestor of this character that I saw in the other version of this show. Mm -hmm. So it's not entirely sure what exactly is or isn't spoiler. So I think just prepare yourself for just light, yeah. gentle spoilers in general. But I think if there's like a big beloved character at any given time that would die in one of these shows, you know, I would say that is, you know, be careful. Don't spoil that yeah. for people. It, but uh, this would be kind well, of like a long, a long winded yeah. way to say I, uh, there is a few things that took me a little off guard about uh, Lord of the Rings because I'm just such a noob. Like, uh, I didn't realize that it was called <laughs> Middle Earth because it's in the middle of stuff. I, I just I just never assumed that there was places off yeah. the map, right? Because it seems like whenever you're introduced to a fantasy world, you, the landmass that you're presented with is almost always like a gigantic continent, right? And everything around it yep. doesn't matter. I didn't realize, I guess, to the left of the map, there's like more elves and is, is is that where like Frodo goes at the end of yeah. the trilogy? Yep. Right? Okay, yes. that makes so that that makes well, a little bit I, more sense. <laughs> and I think the difference here is the Rings of Power are, are this in the Second Age, thousands and thousands of years before Lord of the Rings takes place. Right? The landscape of this Middle Earth is a little different. There's uh, things that allude to it, and there are characters that do you know age into their roles in Lord of the Rings. And and I don't think this is a spoiler simply because. We know uh, Galadriel and Elrond are in this show, right? Younger versions of themselves, uh, who are main character. You know, I wouldn't say main characters, main players in the Lord of the Rings later. But this show is coming from an elven. It starts off with an elven point of view, right? We we've never really gotten that. We've only gotten the hobbits viewpoint. Like they are like people who don't travel. They don't want trouble. They never do anything. They live in their holes in the ground. They stay in their little farming communities and they didn't do anything or want to learn anything so i think yeah. the the lens at which we're viewing lord of the rings the original stuff versus this kind of like, this expands upon that quite a bit and i'm actually enjoying that like you said like learning more about the world at large rather than just hey here's a a, a band of characters and what they see in the moment um yeah not really... necessarily the history of the universe Yeah, it really does feel like a history lesson at times, too, because it was funny going into this. We had talked about this previously when the show was announced, like, oh, well, this is something we don't really have to worry so much about, like, prequelitis, because this is, like, such a prequel so far back in time. Things will be so disconnected, but then you had to gently remind me, like, oh, don't forget these elves, like, never die, so those will continue as kind of, like, your arc through the story. Uh, which is probably why they're kind of taking front and center point when it comes to uh, the story, 
right? And then this was almost hilarious to me. We open up with a narration, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but the first thing the narration says is just like, oh, there was actually a whole nother bad guy, a whole nother war and stuff that you missed. And I was like, wait a minute, I thought this was supposed to be yeah. the beginning of all of this stuff. Like, no, 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 no. Like, this, is, this isn't this is the beginning. Like, I guess we're holding back possibly a little bit more, maybe if they well, want I to think do another prequel, prequel. <laughs> I think it's the right. I think, I think it comes down to the rights. I think Amazon only has the rights to the second age which is post Morgoth, which is the big evil, oh, the the pre Sauron evil. So yeah, I had like, to learn who the hell a Morgoth was. Yeah, that, that that took so, me a little bit to figure out. Yeah, so they're playing in a very interesting area, right? Um, they don't have the Third Age, and the, the Third Age is, you know, Gandalf, Saruman. Those wizards didn't come until the Third Age. So, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, there's there's a very interesting set of characters they can do, very interesting set of window they can tell. But, you know, at the same time, like, you, you have to educate us. And, and the problem, th- there's a problem and, a, and and not a problem here is, you know, we've talked about prequelitis, right? Mm-hmm. I'm never worried about two of these characters so far. Um, <laughs> Elrond and uh, Galadriel will live for thousands of years more after this. Uh, so I don't think they're ever going to die. Um, but, you know, every other character seems to be new to me, right? I don't know them. I've never seen them. I and and I feel like that's that's good that we can build relationships with those characters. Um, I really I think to me what I like about this show the most so far, Mike, and and you can tell me what you think. It feels because of the Lord of the Rings, it feels familiar to me, and like the adaptation, you know, for the show, the world feels the same, right? The the Harfoots, which I believe are pre Hobbit characters, right? Uh, that's what they they seem to be. Mm-hmm. Feel like the Hobbits, you know the you know, there are the elves and, and their, their cities. Everything feels like, oh, I remember this from watching Lord of the Rings. And this yeah. world, I, I'm, I'm already here. I know it. Great. The the consistency of the quality is there. And when you yeah. talk about money, I was looking at effects the whole time. Right? I'm like, how are the effects? How are these worlds and sets built? And I, I feel it. I honestly feel the quality coming through that money. Like, Oh, yeah. It looks... It looks great. Uh, you, we kind of get our first flex on at least a uh, fully CG character right in uh, the first episode where we get to see. I think it's a snow yeah. troll or snow I don't troll. know exactly. Yeah. yeah, I don't Ice know troll. exactly what the genius genius of that character was. But uh, my wife leaned over to me like uh, unprompted, like this looks really good, and I was like, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, we've kind of reached this point of like this is like feature budgets of course Mm -hmm. and also when you look at a budget per episode they're they're pre-planning all of this ahead of time right you know they of course they have to budget per episode to like pay directors and writers and whatnot but all of this visual effects work is being spread across like tons of different studios over like months and years uh so they are they're picking their fights and they're doing it really really well because everything looks great and i hate and and simply because i've watched the second one i feel like the first one is lighter maybe on that cgi than the, than maybe other episodes might be um because a lot of it feels like like tactile sets right there's a scene when they're in a um kind of a garden of trees with statues um mm-hmm. you know talking and i'm like this feels good like this doesn't feel like a closed off set it feels like an open set but like i can feel the tactic ta- you know the tactileness of this set as these characters are moving around these like elven places back and mm-hmm. forth yes, um but- Unfortunately, yeah. I feel like with every popular release with a big fan base, you always have the vocal minority. And if you've been on Twitter over the weekend, uh, Lord of the Rings Brings a Power is you know not immune to any of that. I've seen every uh, noxious hot take that you could possibly see from the color of the skin of these fantasy characters to people just like micro analyzing just vfx and like these people just really need to chill out i I suppose you could have beef when it comes to maybe how you feel the story is being portrayed because if you're a super lord of the rings nerd and you were all up in all of these texts and info you know you could maybe be you know a little perturbed by maybe how they're you're handling some of your favorite characters but man uh, if you're just a casual fan of this stuff, like I'm having a, I'm having a great time. I'm having fun. Yeah. I'll look forward to. I. It seems like it's supposed to be Fridays this drops, or is it Thursdays? I'm not entirely sure when I'm supposed to be watching episode three. I guess I'll just wait around until there's a sponsored tweet put in my face of episode three uh, now available. So I'm having a great time. No controversy on my end. Uh, it's great. 
it's a totally different DNA and chemical makeup than the other fantasy mm-hmm. show that's on the air right now. And I think they can both coexist at the same time. And you can have fun watching both of them. Yeah, absolutely. I And again, I, this is where I'll show my hand. I am a Lord of the Rings person. Um, if I had to pick one of these two, which one I'm going to watch? Or spend my time in, in fantasy uh, medieval lands? You know, um, you know, it, I, nothing against either one. I just lean Lord of the Rings. You know, that's how our house falls uh, you know the other part is you know again the house of dragons game of thrones house of dragons which is on his, i believe third episode today or yesterday maybe yesterday because um, today is monday yeah today is monday um and you know i've not had a chance to watch this mike um and i just i the I series or say, just the episode any of it i've not watched oh, okay. any house of dragons and and that's fine and, and and that's 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 on me. I don't have the desire to watch it, and it's mostly because I've never had an affinity for Game of Thrones throughout this entire run. Uh, not just the last season. I'm not I'm not one of those people like oh the last season gave me a bad taste. I just never really. I don't know what the affinity like. I don't know what I'm missing you know to to get there. But you know at the same time, um, I I don't know what to do. And I just looked at my uh, Lord of the uh, Lord of the Rings is nine p.m. On Thursdays for you, midnight for me. So technically, we're both Friday and Thursday. Gotcha. Um, okay. When Good to know. Comes out, so, yes. Good to know. Anyway, uh, yes. Uh, but Game of Thrones, you know, House of Dragons. Uh, t- tell me what you think. But we have a little bit of news for it, but go ahead and, and lay, lay it on me. What you think? Yeah, here. it is. It is just very interesting, right? You just can't ignore that these two shows are concurrently airing side by side. They'll both be airing. They're, I think, third episodes within the same week of each other. If not, Game of Thrones could be an episode ahead. I'm not 100% sure. But they are basically running at the same time, both prequels of beloved, uh, for the most part, franchises. I mean, if you want, if people want to, you know, dog on the last, like, two, one and a half seasons of, you know, Game of Thrones, you can always just look over at uh, The Hobbit from Lord of the Rings, right? I'm Mm -hmm. sure you can equally uh, tarnish that as well. So we're back in these, like, prequel ages where you're looking at uh, ancestors of beloved characters. So uh, the comparisons really stop there, though, because the styles of the show are just totally different. I mean, House of Dragons just kind of lives and breathes the DNA of Game of Thrones, which is the fight for the throne. I don't think yes. too many people are worried about who's going to sit on the throne in Middle Earth. It's kind of more about this fantasy struggle for power, which well, just feels yeah. just less political overall, where it's just yeah. like, you know, in, in Lord of the Rings, if somebody wants something, they'll just go to war or they'll fight somebody for it, right? In game in House yeah. of Dragons, you gotta politically maneuver and get in there, and there's just less fantasy overall as well. well uh, I, I, yeah. I, I keep watching House of Dragons, and I just keep thinking there's a little bit of a missed opportunity of like, don't these people realize how useful these dragons are just outside of a, a war? I mean, come on, if they're, it's, it's like they have a plane, right? To be able to fly around this kingdom just as something that nobody else can do to get from point A to point B. I almost feel like there should be like a cottage industry within uh, Westeros, right? Where you're just breeding a bunch of dragons. You start to make your own like dragon airline business. I mean, the economy would flourish, you know? They just need to make me hand of the king and I'll just speak into the king's ear and you know what? Uh, things will be booming but uh be- beyond that it's still very much game of thrones you know you got the gr- gr- gratuitous violence the nudity actually has been dialed down which is usually not something you talk about right when you're talking about tv shows just the existence of nudity uh but game of thrones was kind of infamous for their sex position in the series and this has uh significantly tied it down to the point of I always have this notion where I need to look at like kind of the uh, content warning in the top left corner, like when a Game of Thrones property starts, right? Last week, there was zero nudity warning, so there thus no nudity in last week's episode. And this week, there was only brief nudity warning, and I didn't even see it when it happened. So maybe that's a bit of a, a response to how the first season was handling that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the House of Dragons is very, very much... Game of Thrones, while t- Rings of Power is very, yeah. very much Lord of the Rings. <laughs> well, and I think, you know, if I was to say Lord of the Rings is like essentially Dungeons and Dragons. It's the fight for good and evil, right? Like you have good and you have evil and that's what the, the mm-hmm. thing is. Well, you, you nailed it on the head. Um, Game of Thrones, House of Dragons, it's all a political 
ploy, right? Like you could literally set that in any time frame, and it would still be the same kind of saga uh, along along the lines. It just happens to be in their this fantasy uh, medieval esque kind of kind of thing. So, yep. right, I, I I think they're very different. They're similar aesthetically, but different in terms of what what story they're trying to tell. Yeah, um, and, and and that's we'll not probably, a bad thing. That's, yeah, and we'll probably briefly you know readdress these two shows as the series go along. Any high points, any low points that we want to talk about. But uh, this just goes to show you that even when uh, two guys like us have a superhero podcast where we talk about everything superheroes right there's fantasy shows like this that become so big and so popular and so ingrained in pop culture that we just simply can't ignore them even for uh even for a premiere so we checked them out we let you know what we thought it seems Mm -hmm. like between the two of us we'll be watching them and who knows maybe we'll come back here when the uh, seasons wrap up and we'll uh Capture. Yeah, worst worst case scenario, we'll at least have one in one foot, one in the other. So exactly, uh, we got that. But the news for Game of Thrones: House of Dragons is one of the uh, there's two showrunners uh, for season one, and one of them has already left uh, even before the the uh, third episode has aired. They they are for season two. Um, Ryan Condal, who is one of the two showrunners, will be the sole showrunner going forward. Yeah, uh, I believe the I other person the, will be executive producer, but that's it. Yeah, I looked into this a little bit. The reason why they're leaving, it seems like it was honestly predetermined all along because they're leaving the show just for an overall deal at HBO. So they're not leaving yeah. the network at all. There's no, there's nothing there. And also, uh, they must were be a good deal because dual- HBO is not, you know, they're not bringing <laughs> yeah. in talent right now. And there are dual showrunners to begin with because uh, uh, Ryan Condal, who's going to be the sole showrunner, I believe they're a little bit more green. So it seems like they brought in kind of a more seasoned um, uh, runner to kind of just get the show off and running and then, you know, hand it over. So, yeah, I don't think there's too much to worry about here, uh, but there's definitely a, um, a spread, a spider's web casting out from House of Dragon that uh, maybe will create more shows. I, it doesn't necessarily seem like the yeah. person who left is going to be doing more Game of Thrones, uh, but that's right. always a possibility. Yeah, it, and honestly, you know, um, Game of Thrones is known, notorious for having dual showrunners in that, the, the first part, right? Like the, mm-hmm. the first, uh, I guess, Game is the only Game of Thrones, not, not the spinoff. You know, there's opportunity to tell more stories in this land. There's, there's tons of other things. So um, it, it's just... You know, there's opportunity for it to grow. I don't think this is bad news by any means, right? We we've talked about like I don't think a showrunner leaving is necessarily bad. Uh, along the times, sometimes it takes a new showrunner. We'll talk about another show that's getting a different showrunner that could inject some life into it down the road or a different different take. So, but I'm not hearing, you know, complaints about House of Dragons. I'm not hearing complaints about you know Lord of the Rings, like the people running the show. So. Uh, very interested to see how that plays off and um, obviously they've already announced the season 2 we talked about last week and they've got to get prepped for that now so they can start filming it uh, sooner than later the other thing that came out uh, yesterday that I did not get to watch yet I'm just beating myself up for it is uh, Rick and Morty Uh, they're back with season 6 on uh, Cartoon Network I believe it's also on HBO Max now I could be be wrong on that one but I know it's always on Cartoon Network Um, but the same day they also released a God of War um, the new Ragnarok parody with Rick and Morty, where like Rick shaves his head, paints his head red. And it's like we gotta go to the the Nine Realms, Morty, and like he gives Morty the bow and arrow, who's supposed to be the kid from the, the God of War stuff. So uh, I love all their crossovers they do. They are unabashedly like, yes, they know they're doing a crossover promotion with another company, but but God of War Ragnarok is just another another big win for them uh, on this. Yeah. And- I think there's also, I saw a news headline that they are committing to a new season every year now. So it seems like everything's kind of gone back to a reg- regular production cycle. So yeah. hopefully, we, you, you know, you won't have to put up with uh, too many uh, at replies well, they, to Adult Swim tweets that are like, when's the next season? It should be a little bit more regular moving forward. Uh, so they are, were committed to what, season seven, I believe? Yeah. Um, is that is that correct? Um, no, not through season seven. I think the I think the contract was for seven more seasons. I think oh, they are. I 70, think they are committed. I'm sorry, seventy episodes. We don't know yeah. how many seasons. So okay. Yeah. So I, I feel like they're probably going to get to at least season ten. It feels like, and if one, not two, more yeah. beyond that. Yeah, it looks like ten per. So yeah, and that was in season th- after season three. So yeah, it looks like season ten. So I knew I knew there were seven in there somewhere. I just couldn't figure out where where it lived. <laughs> that's all right. Um, that's all right. But the new one, apparently, like the, I, I want to watch it. Uh, uh, called Solar Ricks uh, is apparently like 
this is a new storytelling era for Rick and Morty, right? They're they're like they're acknowledging the past, but kind of moving forward. So I think, you know, we mentioned you know if they get through season ten, I can see them very much ending on season ten on their terms, and this is the start of that kind of back half of the show where everything gets gets towards that. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to to kind of dig into this the rick and morty um fan base has been very toxic over the years we've talked about this so we're blue in the face right like <laughs> remember the szechuan sauce at mcdonald's yeah. the, well, we'll never uh, forget yeah they, it was just it was just awful so I'm, I'm glad rick and morty that that has died down and quelled and you know they can come back and and give us some some fun science fiction show because we talked about they did an infinity train-esque episode a couple seasons ago and that show has been mm-hmm. canceled now so um so we're going to get our cartoon, cartoon sci-fi, for sure. Uh, moving into Spider-Man No Way Home, the more fun stuff version. Did you go see it this weekend, Mike? Uh, I did not, but I did see a YouTuber who did a, a intensive okay. kind of breakdown of what indeed was new. Uh, so yeah. I feel like I did there... not miss much. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're right. So um, it did a little over $6 million for the holiday weekend. Um, not bad for a re-release you know, almost a year later. Um, and, uh, there's 11 more minutes. Uh, there's a post credit scene now, Mike, I know you, you probably heard about that. Um, there was mm-hmm. not one originally because that was the Dr. Strange trailer and there is a more Matt Murdock scene. So Charlie Cox gets some extra stuff, but what I've seen from leaked camera footage is underwhelming, like seriously underwhelming for an yeah. extra version. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard, uh, in its benefit that a lot of the extra footage doesn't necessarily seem like deleted scenes. Some of it does, for sure, but not all of it, so that's good. Uh, And I did hear hear one positive review of apparently there is kind of like a uh, three Spider-Men talking to each other joke that maybe is about possibly web shooters, not 100% sure, that wasn't in the, Mm -hmm. the original film that is in this bonus version that is very, very funny, so... Uh, some people were saying that the joke is good enough just to go back to see the movie for. Uh, I will wait around and see for sure. But I, I, I think the big question now is now that it's kind of out there in the world, right? Uh, who's going to be streaming this extra fun mm. version, right? Is that going to Netflix? Is Sony going to make sure that that never gets the stream so they always have a, a it, revenue model to sell it, you know? <laughs> is it Was it um, Stars, I believe, that currently... Um... Well, I think it should be. Live. I think it should be Netflix. I mean, there is a chance that some stuff could be on Stars at the present moment, just because they're waiting for contracts mm-hmm. to expire. But everything is supposed to be going to uh, Netflix, yeah. so we'll I see. Suppose, if it's that still on Stars. Going there. It, it's a Homecoming, No Way Home, and I believe, uh, sorry, uh, No Way Home. Sorry, I meant Far From Home. No Way Home. Yeah, they're all on Stars right now, so that contract has not kicked in yet. Um, yeah. It, it always happens on, like, the, the first of a month, it feels like. Uh, we were yeah. trying to rewatch that 70s show, and we were looking around for it, and, like, bizarrely enough, it just it wasn't streaming at all, which I thought was surprising because Netflix is going to be coming out with that 90s show sooner rather than later. Uh, so we checked on September 1st, the first of the month, and lo and behold, that 70s show is now streaming on Peacock. So just keep your eyes out. The first of the month, it's always a it's oh. always a boon. It's always a boon or a loss, right? You could be losing yeah. the thing that you're trying to watch. Like I know Shit's Creek is leaving in October Netflix and moving over to Hulu. So So I, I just did a quick double check and it looks like Netflix's deal started in tw- for 2022 films. So mm-hmm. there's no date when those will go over there. So we'll see. Um Yeah, we'll see when those happen, but Honestly, I mean, this is one of those things. Like, I'm not gonna feel bad just watching the bonus stuff on YouTube later. Like, if I'm me, gonna be completely me neither. honest, they already got my money. Yeah, so um, I've got that. It's also, you know, hopefully one day Disney will be like, "Hey, Sony, can we just can we just put these on Disney Plus? Like, please, like, let everyone watch because in other countries they have it on Disney Plus. So we don't. So this would be the perfect cool. opportunity, right, to uh, to hawk a, a VPN as like sponsored content, yeah. you know, because that's what all those ad reads always are. Uh, so if you're a VPN and you want to sponsor the podcast, let us know. We could organically work you in every episode yeah. so easily. We, we will find a way. <laughs> Honestly, we'll probably use you quite a bit just to watch some of these movies to see what it is. Mm. I love to be completely honest. Like I will go find um, screenshots of the other Disney Plus, the Marvel timeline from Disney Plus in other countries because they include every movie. 
in there, mm-hmm. um, including Spider-Man, because they don't do that on the American ones. Uh, so, um, yeah, love to do that. Uh, staying in the Marvel Universe, um, and again, this is fantastic news, but tragic at the same time. Uh, the Emmys were this weekend, right? Um, so the uh, Chadwick creative Boseman, the create the creative arts Emmys were this weekend. Yes, yes the creative arts Emmys. So the Chadwick Boseman has won a uh, Emmy for his performance as uh, Star Lord T'Challa in the What If series. So, um, you know, we sadly lost him uh, was it two years ago now, I believe. Um, last year we had What If. Um, Almost, it feels like a year ago, over a year ago, what if. Uh, so, you know, it, he recorded all his lines before that, and he just did a great job, and, you know, congratulations to uh, him and his family uh, who, who were there to uh, accept the award and take that. So, um, Yeah, that's great. I would love to see. Yeah. I know the Creative Arts Emmys usually aren't televised, but I wonder if there'll be any uh, footage of that because that'd be kind of nice to see. But there was some yeah. other good news that came out of the Creative Arts Emmys. Uh, I know Arcane, a show that I've been telling everybody to watch on Netflix, uh, they won an Emmy. I don't know if it was the Emmy like for like animated program, but they definitely won a big one, which was well-deserved. And then also Severance has started to win mm. some smaller awards. So I'm hoping that's a good sign that next week when the actual Emmys are, I think it's Sunday night next week, if not Monday. I don't know what Monday, day it's Monday. Mo- They're the 12th. Yeah, Yeah. so uh, I- I'm hoping Severance uh, does a bit of a sweep well, there. Yeah, uh, Chip and Dale won television movie, by the way. I don't, uh, we talked oh, about yeah, we, we that's right. We thought that movie oh, was pretty that funny. So and... That movie is a, an absolute gem, and I feel like nothing like that will ever happen again in our lifetime. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's... You know, I, I and, and this is unrelated, but I think it's, it's hilarious, you know, because you think of Rick and Morty, you think of this, like, Mark Zuckerberg is trying to create the metaverse right on Facebook, you know, using the VR mm-hmm. and the Oculus platform. However, someone was like, the metaverse already exists, and it's Fortnite. Um, like, literally everything can live in Fortnite, right? Um, and you pick a property, it's going to be in there. Uh, but And I'm like, well, also, like, you know, a Chip and Dale is an opportunity, like, is a great thing. Like, this is the metaverse, right, where, like, they, re- they recognize cartoon characters were cartoon characters doing acts and like they can make this whole movie based on ugly sonic we who nobody knows who ugly sonic is he's not a character he was just a bad profile but like they turned him into a character and that's funny this to me that i think that's just hilarious as hell so um yeah i, I think that's funny so yeah we'll uh we'll, 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 we'll let you guys know more after there's other big winners uh when those debut next monday when we're recording mike a week from today <laughs> Uh, Wonder Man, that show that is coming out, I believe, um, produced by Daniel uh, or Dan- Dustin Daniel Cretton, the director of Shang Chi and the upcoming uh, in Kang Dynasty War. D- is it Kang Wars? Dynasty Wars. Which one? Which one's it called, Mike? Kang. I, Kang I think it's just called Kang Dynasty. Kang Dynasty. There it is. Yeah, Secret Wars is the one after it. Um, the show, so they have, uh, I guess, not announced. There's, there's this is reports uh, that the series will see the return of Trevor Slattery, played by Ben Kingsley, and you know this is a character who has really pulled a 180 in the MCU, if you will. Um, people really did not like his twist in Iron Man three at all, like enough to, you know, um, get Kevin Feige to create a one shot to kind of rectify the Mandarin. And then they created, you know, Shang Chi, whose dad is the Mandarin, and they fixed it, and they included Trevor, Trevor Slattery last year. Uh, again, his spiel about the Planet of the Apes movie—they uh, were monkeys acting like they were riding horses—is one of my favorite, like, <laughs> I guess puns or jokes for this character. So it's, it's very interesting that he would come back. However, in the comic books, Wonder Man is an actor. He's popular. He's a well-known actor. So it would be sense to have someone else who is an actor be in that show if you will. Yeah. Like it would there's... be kind of funny if, uh, if, uh, Trevor Slattery, maybe, uh, you know, he went on this uh, adventure, right. But it seems like he needs to go back to the real world at some point in time. Mm-hmm. So maybe he'll, uh, do like an acting school or maybe he'll try to weasel his way into like the entourage of wonder man. Who knows? Yeah. But he's a funny yeah, character I... now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Once you, once you see him for who he is and then they put him in the right place, he's great. Um, the interesting part of this is that as far as we know, there is no lead cast for this show. Now, next weekend could change this for us in a heartbeat, mm-hmm. but at this moment in time, we don't know who Wonder Man himself actually is mm-hmm. um, or, or what the show, where the show is going to live. And that's fine. I, I think, you know, they, they can have shows in different levels of production 
at yeah, any given but I moment. Mean, so, but if we're starting to get this news right before kind of the next big wave of announcements, there yeah. seems to be a higher chance than normal, right, that we could hear. Yeah. So. The 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 closer you get uh, to like bigger trades picking stuff up, I think the to an event the more likely you have as well, right? This isn't just like. Um, we got this covered running an article to, to cover every actor under the sun's name in here. So we'll talk about that here in a second. The, the, before we get into that, I do want to talk about one uh, Marvel project that's gonna, that wasn't announced at San Diego Comic-Con, but we know is coming and it'll be the end of this year, only because friend of the show, Quentin, has Legos of this actual show in his hands at his house, <laughs> and that's the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Um, I went to the store after he showed us that, and I found them at the store as well, Mike. So if anyone is looking to get Legos based on this uh, upcoming short, you can find them. But I want to show you guys uh, this link to a Twitter showing the first art for the upcoming holiday special. And it includes a very, very interesting tagline twice called Yandu Ruined Christmas. Yeah, um, which is a, so, a little a little odd because if this is indeed supposed to take place after Volume Two, did he ruin Christmas because he's dead and he's just well? I think not he ruined Christmas anymore? because he. I mean, if Peter grew up with Yondu, Yondu probably lied to him what Christmas was or like ruined it for him every year, kind of thing. Oh, uh, so you're thinking maybe we could be seeing like flashbacks or something like that? Yeah, that does yeah. that does make a little bit of sense. Yeah, yeah, flashbacks or like Peter's like, you know, this is our first time, you know, to go celebrate Christmas together, whatever. Um, because they very specifically mention Christmas in this several times, right? Like, we've talked about being a holiday special. Do they know what Christmas is in space? Well, sounds like he's going to be trying to, to share some Christmas cheer. Um, so yeah. I just don't, and the other thing is, I don't know what that little ghost looking dude with the three dots in the bottom left is. Um, yeah, it, it's hard to say because this is – what we're looking at here is what is akin to like I would say a sticker sheet, right? Yeah. Like when you get like to and from labels to put on your presents around the holidays. This is kind of the vibe that we're getting from this for sure. Yeah, I don't know what that is. There's like three dots in the head. Maybe it's like the ghost of like Christmas past or something kind of yeah. that vibe. But there's also a Christmas like wreath that says I don't know what Christmas is. But Christmas time is here. Kind of has a little bit of a cadence to me of like a song, yeah. right? So maybe they'll be yeah. singing. We know James Gunn loves his uh, music and even parody style songs. So yeah, it seems like we, yeah. there's a well, lot that you can kind of glean from this. Yeah. Well, my favorite, I think, is Seasons Grootings. Um, it's literally mm -hmm. it's, it's made out of twigs. It's got Groot. Uh, you know, mistletoe. Huge thing here. It's, they they really lean into the new Guardians logo, which is from you know the, the 2008 comic line. Um, the Ravager, I guess, inspired logo. So, yeah, I, I think this is fun. This is great. I'm really excited to see more. Um, it's fun to see uh, the that Groot still has an emoji if you hashtag Groot when you look at this tweet. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can check out the in the show notes. Uh, get a direct link to that and see what that art looks like if you want to. So, yeah. Uh, this weekend, this coming weekend, is Disney's D23. This is every two years, right, Mike? They host this uh, in person. So this is a this is a big event. Um, this is the fan event as well, meaning this is not the, um, like, the Disney. It is has Disney Plus A, but this is not like a shareholder-only thing. People can get tickets and go to this. They are very expensive. I looked into them. Very expensive, Mike. I was very <laughs> um, shocked, uh, sticker shocked. But I do want to share, We I sent this to you early on. There has been going around... Uh, recently in the higher, the upper echelons of news articles about Marvel's rumored announcements for casting um, coming up this weekend. And I'm going to list some names out here, Mike, and uh, you tell me, uh, you know, what, what you think as we kind of go through this. So mm -hmm. um, first and foremost is uh, Star Wars actor John Boyega making a crossover into Marvel. Yeah, could be um, a, maybe a bit of an, an apology from uh, yeah. from Disney overall. You know, maybe uh, I don't know if exactly if his beef was, beef was with uh, Kathleen Kennedy in general, but he didn't really like the way his character was uh, handled in that trilogy, and I think we'd all yeah. agree with him there. So it seems like yep. if he is going to be taking on another project at the same studio, uh, he's probably being promised things will be done better long term yeah, and, for his characters. And, and I think, you know, again, the people running this are better. I, I don't know. I don't want to jump. A lot of the, the articles are like, well, maybe he's in Blade or he's in, you know, Captain America. I'm like, well, I don't want to typecast him. Um, you know, just 
because he, he he is a black actor. I don't want to put him in the movies with those leads. So like he could literally be he yeah. could literally be in any movie coming up here. Um, moving on is a big heavy hitter from DC, Henry Cavill. This has been rumored for a long time, Mike. Um, Simi- and- <laughs> this this almost really feels like similar gripes. The same exact thing that I said about John Boyega, right? You know, looking to be treated a little bit better, mm-hmm. have a little bit more of a of an idea of what the future likes with the projects. Yeah. Uh, and at least you can I, plan on consistency, right, when you take a role at Marvel. Yeah, I do have a um, rumored theory for him that he will be playing a Marvel's Hyperion in the Loki show, is is the, the, the front-running rumor here, if you will, for Vegas Odds. Are you familiar with Hyperion by chance? Uh, it, for some reason, my brain keeps connecting to Sentry, but is that is that right? Is there very close? Sort of... Yeah. So 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 Hyperion in the Marvel universe is another universe uh, they called the Squadron Supreme, which was Marvel's DC version, and Hyperion mm-hmm. is their Superman. Um, oh, okay. Which would be funny for him to play a Superman, and the the the, the rumor is that he's supposed to be Hyperion is like a multiversal villain for the Loki show, not just a one off kind of cameo. Um, oh, I see. An actor of yeah, his nature. He, yeah, yeah. You would you wouldn't put like literal Superman in the MCU without doing something with them, right? Like I, I keep yeah. thinking back to like Christian Bale, right? Because we have a, a list of a lot of these like really high profile actors that we're about to talk about, and same vibes that everyone had when it's like, oh my God, Christian Bale. He used to be Batman. This big high profile actor is going to be in the MCU, and then like does not really survive uh, outside of the one movie mm-hmm. he was in and his performance uh was great but just felt like he was in the wrong movie to me but well, he's like lacking he, the, lacking any character development at all yeah so that was unfortunate so that is something that we do have to worry about like we might talk about like a really big actor here that could yep. unfortunately go to waste but so i hope not yeah yeah, if if he's in Loki uh, as Hyperion, I think that's gonna be fantastic, right? That's a real, that's a real like jab at DC. Like he's playing our Superman now. The hell with you. Um, mm-hmm. But you know he could also play anybody else that he really wants to. Maybe he's Wonder Man, right? Like he's got that stature of a Wonder Man uh, built mm-hmm. into him. Uh, actress Jodie Comer, um, she is rumored to be playing uh, Susan Storm, possibly. She was a front runner in some articles I saw. She yeah, she looks so familiar. Oh, she is from. Knives um, out. Uh, Killing Eve also. That was a very, very popular show um, for uh, Showtime, maybe. I don't remember exactly what it was on. That's why she looks familiar. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know and she, and she, was in, she was in um, Free Guy as the – she was the woman oh, developer. Oh, yeah, she was. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, at least she, maybe she was in Knives Out. I don't know. Either way, doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Everyone's Daisy in Edgar Knives Jones. Out eventually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daisy Edgar Jones, uh, she's recently been in uh, Where the Crawdads Sing, which actually just hit digital today. Um, she's also uh, rumored to be cast uh, or announced as cast uh, for the MCU going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I have nothing behind who she might be as well. So could be anybody. John Krasinski. Uh, people really want him back as Mr. Fantastic. Mike, what do you think? Uh, I mean... He exists, right, in a multiversal yeah. plane. It, well, not that multiversal plane anymore. So, yeah. But this, this is also contradicts the very, very uh, strong reports. Or I guess not strong reports. Uh, the multitude of reports that it's going to be that other guy. I don't know who that yeah. other guy is. Like, he's got the, the curly guy hair. You. Yeah, every, everyone's doing yeah. the photoshops of him in a Fantastic yeah. Four suit. So, yep. yeah, we'll have to see how that, that plays out. Yeah. Yep, hundred percent. He John Krasinski is also a fantastic actor. He could be anything he wanted to be mm-hmm. in these if he if he if he so cho- chooses to be. A um, little less surprising, Giancarlo Esposito, right? Um, so he, you know, he's Moff Gideon in Star Wars. He is Breaking Bad. He is, you know, he's a Far Cry Six. He's in everything, right? A great actor. Um, people want him to be Professor X. Uh, so. I I've Could also seen that I don't know. I've seen I've seen the heavy rumor also of possibly Doctor Doom as well. Yeah. So we'll have to see what the, where that pans out. But yeah, it, it does kind of seem like you got to get to a point here in your head where these really big characters that have yet to be cast, like Professor X or Doctor Doom, that we haven't really seen much of at all, uh, are going to be probably really big actors, right? It feels like you don't put yeah. no names in those roles, or at least lesser name in those roles. Yeah, and, and also, the thing is, we've talked about this, I don't know if they will 
announce X-Men actors before 2025. So we're kind of like, you know, in a weird place where they could, they may not, but, you know, I, I still think he's a great actor uh, caliber. So uh, we'll, we'll let you know what comes out of that. And lastly, a uh, big name, Denzel Washington, Mike, uh, you know, one of the, the greats uh, himself. So uh, Denzel, I don't know who be, you, that would yeah, be a I, huge get, right? Like that almost kind of seems like so high profile in a sense of like, well, we can get him, but he's only, he only wants to do like one movie. He's got a stack schedule. He doesn't want to commit to a franchise, but he's got like uh, nieces, nephews, kids that are begging him to do a superhero movie, right? So he said he'll do one of them. I could, I get that vibe from him too, right? Oh, but yeah. Also, he's so powerful. Like he, like he kind of seems like Josh Brolin esque in a way, where like you give yeah. him a big character that lasts several movies, where he gets to punch a ton of different characters, right? So I don't know yeah. how that's gonna go. Like, do you like do you go like CG? Like, I feel like with this list of characters, actors that we talked about at least one of them I feel like has to be alien in nature, right? With like the cosmic side um, spilling out. So who's getting the green skin, right? Who's getting the pointy ears and the antennas? It's got to be somebody here. So uh, I don't know if uh, Denzel yeah. would want to do that, but worked well for Brolin being Thanos. So yeah. uh, we'll have to wait and see. But he could easily be, you know, uh, possibly uh, thinking ahead to uh, Secret Wars, right? Like, you know, there's a character called the Beyonder who who mm-hmm. is you know all powerful in the Secret Wars. He he's the one who kind of holds all this stuff together. With uh, he, he could be a Beyonder. He could be something else. Like there's a lot of opportunities you know towards Secret Wars, right? Like the big the big one um, to to make some impact on the MCU at large. So a lot of I mean these these actors I listen to these seven huge actors, some up and comers, some big established ones. A lot of talent, uh, a lot of you know, name recognition right here alone. Um, I did see the article saying that these are being rumored for Phase Five, um, but you know these characters could also be Phase Six as well. Um, you know, we, we may not know until they announce them this weekend. Uh, if if they announce, I really hope they announce them this weekend, Mike. I like this would be just you know I would just love to come back next week and talk about this, um, get that hype level going because I think Me once too. we get some confirmations, I'd be so excited. Me too. Um, so, yep. So you guys check that out. We'll report back to you next week. Uh, moving on, Thunderbolts, the upcoming movie from Marvel. Um, it's like the Suicide Squad. The current uh, report is that Florence Pugh's Yelena Belova will lead the team, which will, again, be similar to the Suicide Squad, but also include John Walker, U.S. Agent, and Baron Zemo. Um, there were no other names mentioned out the gate, but, you know, uh, doesn't mean there's not, right? There will be other people. We just don't know who they are. Yeah, those are the most obvious and safest things to bet. So yeah. it makes sense that we would hear about those the first. But it, Florence uh, Pugh, she's she's the she's the minute, she's the scene, she's the girl right now, she's the yeah. actor. So it makes sense that you know you kind of put her at the front. And also, I like her character uh, like miles ahead of uh, the, these other two. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'll look forward to more Yelena. Yeah, you need you need someone who's leading the team who's who's likable, right? Like even her mm-hmm. appearance in Hawkeye was probably some of the highlights. Like she's eating mm-hmm. mac and cheese with sriracha in it. Like mm-hmm. you're like, yep, I out of the pot even. I'm like, man, I I relate to that on so many levels. Yep. Um, and then she's got the actress of Florence. She's got a new movie coming out, right? That people are praising. Um, oh, this week. oh man, that there is a whole drama circling around that movie. Yeah, uh, with, not because uh, of her. Uh, yeah, no, right. the whole like Olivia Wilde, Harry Styles, uh, uh, the who's the who's the kid from Transformers, Shia, Josh, Shia. Uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy. Uh, yeah. I don't think that'll really spill over <laughs> into what yeah. we uh, into what we talk no. about here on the show. Yeah. But, people people yeah. were happy. I mean, the one I did read was people were praising her performance in it. So you know, yeah, she all, she is first. the moment. She she transcends yeah. above the drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's shift some gears into some DC uh, real fast here. Uh, Fandome, people who are so excited, waiting to get their invitations. You're going to have to uh, sadly retreat back to your homes because Fandome is canceled for 2022, Mike. And my guess is if it's canceled for this year, it's canceled forever. Uh, The idea of a virtual event is out the window, right? They're going back to in-person events. They're going to spend money at Comic-Con. They've got leaders at at the top of this who don't know 
uh, what's going on. So I, I feel like this was just inevitable that they were like, we didn't get anything ready yeah. for it. It does make you, it does make you wonder though, right? Do they, is it, is it, is it a chicken and an egg or is it both simultaneously where they mm-hmm. don't have anything to talk about and they don't have the money and the resources to put into yeah. uh, to throwing it as well? Because that is honestly one thing that happens when you merge companies, you start getting rid of the um, you start getting rid of the uh, the duplicates. The, yeah, the, the overlap, right? So I wouldn't be yeah. surprised. I mean, it, whether it's a live or a virtual event, you have a whole event staff that has to take care of all of that. And maybe all of the people that were controlling fandom previously all got kicked to the curb. Yeah. Who knows? My, uh, I would say they probably, like, because mergers take so long, they were probably like, hey, just hold on while we figure this out. And then no one got it done. And they were like, oh, I, yeah, I, I guess too late. I I realize now you say you said mergers, but it sounded like you said murders, and I was like, I thought that still applies. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, the Warner Brothers killing murders, everything. Uh, yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no fandom this year. Sad to say, I did um, see my first Black Adam uh, promotional material yesterday, Mike. I got oh, one of the Rocks God. Zoa energy drink. Um, oh, okay. Of course, and, and, it's Rock. Black Adam's on it. Yeah, I know. I was I, know. I was just about to make a joke. Oh, was it just the Rock tweeting about it? Like, no, it was him putting it on his. No, cans it was his. It was his face on his own cans. Yeah, I was like, they didn't really have to try too hard on this, did they? His, his um, energy drinks aren't bad. I mean, you know, you kind of yeah. have to go out of your way to make a energy drink that I won't drink, and mm-hmm. his is drinkable. I like the white peach. If you can get the white peach, Mike can try it. I highly recommend it. So. All right. Good to know. Um, good stuff. That's that's the can I had with the black. It was the only one with black Adam. Nobody other, no other can had it. So, hmm. of course, I had to get it. Harley Quinn. For those who are watching the third season, uh, will be glad to know that the fourth season has been renewed to HBO Max. Mike, one of the actual things to carry over. Uh, you know, with get a new season. <laughs> yeah, um, I saw the um, the uh, the the showrunner or whoever is uh, leading this show and writing or whatever. I don't know. I don't know much about the crew that makes this show. They tweeted like, uh, "Be right back." Gonna save warner brothers hbo max so yeah <laughs> so like with it. this yeah so with the season uh one through three they've had two showrunners i forget the their names but there's now a new showrunner in place sarah peters uh who's worked on workaholics and Nathan for you and she's been a writer on harley quinn since the show started and is currently a consulting producer for season three uh, that's probably the person that tweeted it then that's probably the tweet i saw yeah yeah, so so those two guys have moved on. I believe they're maybe going to be EPs or something, um, but she will be taking over for that uh, in season four. So I think this is an opportunity for, again, like we talked about at the start of the show, a writer, someone invested in the property to take over and, and run with the show. Um, for at least season four, we'll see how, how that goes. Uh, friend of the show, Brian, he's been watching it. He's, he's really enjoyed season three. Uh, apparently the, the Joker has uh, settled down and married someone, um, else uh yeah. in in the show who already has like kids so he's like trying to be like a, like a house dad kind of thing and it's apparently it's funny i need to I need to get on the show again so <laughs> no offense to it all right last week uh we're gonna sit here and talk about she hulk episode three this week mike um so if you've not watched she hulk you can go knock them out i think all three episodes faster than you can watch the first episode of the rings of power so um these are again 25 to 30 minute episodes very quick very fun uh, very breezy so we're on episode three if you've not seen it go watch it come back you can listen or yeah. not whatever you want to do um i suppose I believe this... it's the i was go just ahead. gonna say I, I suppose it's the theme for this week's episode to uh bookend the show with uh vocal minorities yeah, because say... uh, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the the uh the, the people uh complaining about the show are like just driving me crazy because i just want to shake them and just be like just be happy that we're getting something that's like quality yeah. and good and entertaining because yeah. yeah. how about I feel like it's it's been a while since i've been excited to watch something on disney plus if you don't like it don't fucking watch it like <gasps> gasp it, uh, this also not every project is going to be for you and everyone I've seen, like, literally everyone's like, oh, I'm not, you know, sexist. I just don't like Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, and She-Hulk. I'm like, you, you like, why? They're like, well, I just I just don't like their attitudes. I'm like, you have no other reason to not like these yeah. shows. Like, it's really, and it's also not for you. Like, like She-Hulk, my wife is loving She-Hulk, more, probably more than I am. Mm-hmm. I, I'm having a good time with it. But, like, I, the end of this episode, I think, is the thing that, that, everyone's just getting up in arms over over nothing it's oh, yeah. literally got a megan the stallion you know and she hulk um, which was actually motion captured by uh tatiana maslani um dancing to body by again um 
uh, Megan Thee Stallion and dancing and twerking to it. I'm like, this is funny. This is hilarious. Like, this is what this show needs to be funny. And I, I'm yeah. having a good time with it. Yeah, it's just good humor. Um, like I think we've said before, uh, I personally haven't read a lot of She-Hulk uh, comics or stories, but I've seen a lot of people defend the humor online, too, of just like, you've obviously never read She-Hulk before. She's constantly, yeah. you know, breaking the third wall. Like, this is fourth funny. Wall. This is jokes. Yeah, fourth wall. That's right. I gotta keep track of all my walls. But yeah, I feel like we do just kind of need to take a moment here just to defend the show in a way. And yeah. I do understand the spirit of what you're saying when you say uh, uh not every show is like made for you but i almost think that is a little uh that is almost a, like a little way of kind of giving getting people like uh letting them off easily because honestly anything that's quality can be enjoyed if you well, just get yeah. out of your own way too it's just like like i said at the top of the show like i'm like re-watching gilmore girls for like the third yeah. time and i love that show and that is about a, a teenage daughter and their mother and their grandmother and the drama of their They're, small town like people just need to expand their horizons and, and realize like what is storytelling it's just it's about it's about drama and what people go through in their lives and it can be humorous it can be dramatic and sad, well, but yeah, you know, just it, people need to get out of their own way. It's just, it's so annoying that people well, won't let themselves yeah. enjoy something because there's like a line in the show of like how like, oh, men have had it pretty good. I think it's maybe it's time for the ladies to have some fun. And then there's just a curmudgeon old dude yeah, well, in the and, corner like, no, I hate this show. <laughs> It, it, it well, and I think when I say it's not made for you, I mean it's one of those things like you don't have to watch every episode and go write a you know a long winded par- paragraphs upon paragraphs review of the show saying why you hated it. Is what I guess what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, right? Like it's not like oh, you know, just just get over it. It's like I I'm not a huge again Game of Thrones person. I'm not out there watching it and then going and, and spreading negativity to everybody else when I watch it or see something. I just don't like at the end of the day. There's stuff that anyone anyone can enjoy. Like there's stuff that like if if I don't want to ruin somebody else's fun because I didn't enjoy it, is that is what I'm getting at. And and I believe mm-hmm. you're the same way, right? Like we don't need to go break someone down because they're liking a show, um, or or attack a show just because we don't necessarily agree with it all the time. Yeah. And and I, and I feel like this vocal minority just doesn't let up at all. Yeah. Like no matter what. And obvious. Yeah, and obviously we're not the end-all, be-all deciders of what is yeah. good or isn't. But I'm telling you right now, I have not been enjoying a lot of Marvel stuff that's been on Disney Plus recently. But I am actually really enjoying this. I was a little worried because Moon Knight's kind of started to take a turn on episode three but this is turning in the right direction i'm having mm. a, a good time so we can just talk about the stuff that we liked yeah. in in this episode <laughs> I, I loved it when uh tatiana maslani um uh, i guess jen i can refer to her as jen walters yeah. she it was not the she hulk when she took the stand and she was testifying for how her like ex coworker would be dumb enough to think yes. he was dating uh uh megan the stallion which was a shapeshifter and i just thought that was hilarious and i was kind of a little worried of like well how are they how are they going to explain this shape-shifting superpower because like i've said before i'm worried about how are they justifying all of this extra magic and super strength in this in this world that's been roughly grounded in reality and like oh it's a it's an elf from asgard okay totally that elf, makes yeah. sense we've established asgard as being terrestrial or even if it wasn't terrestrial right you know the kind of uncannon uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would have a yeah. little bit of crossover there every once in a while, too. So I was like, okay, that's a good explanation. Uh, we don't have to, like, invent something brand new to have this character exist. Yeah. And, yeah, it's just well, that whole thread. It's just hilarious. Everything was so funny about it. Well, I, th- I think I, I'm going to go back a little farther. At the start of the episode, she's driving back from the prison. She's like, And she starts to literally talk to the camera. She's like, oh, this isn't one of those shows where there's a cameo of the week, except for Bruce and abomination and now wong like she's like we know you're here for wong like literally telling us what we already know like damn that's smart like that is some yeah. really fun stuff right and there I because, s- like we know what it is yeah and i started tracking it in my head too i was like okay well also we're gonna be having daredevil too daredevil. so that's at least half of the season right that's uh-huh. going to have cameos in it so uh yeah so i thought that was pretty yeah. funny and and then to that point later, where they're at, like right before the, she agrees to do that thing, she like she leans toward like, oh, the A and B plot come together. You're like, mm-hmm. like, oh, this is fun. Like this, like her her breaking the fourth wall is actually 
way more entertaining uh, than it should be because it's not like Deadpool. Well, it's kind of like Deadpool, but like you know, we're pointing out the 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 flaws of the show while also having fun with that as well. Um, but you know, again, we we got to see Abomination finally in his full form, right? Talking about why he went to the thing. Wong stood on the stand. You know, we found out that you know he used to be a Target employee at uh, uh, <laughs> in Nepal uh, based on his mm. LinkedIn profile. Um, yeah, and, and the footage from Shang-Chi, obviously. But I think one of the cool things is, you know, I think if you watch these pretty quickly, you know, it's about an hour. It's kind of like episode, halfway through episode two, right? If we're looking at longer hour-long episodes, we get the wrecking crew at the end of this, who she actually wrecks themselves. But they have, like, Asgardian imbued, like, literally she said, do you steal an Asgardian, like, wrecking or, or construction? Uh, did, and crew? they're like, yeah, we did. And it, <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't, it doesn't even phase her, which I thought was pretty cool, because I thought we were going to see the moment. It's like, oh, now she actually has to you know, deal with the ramifications that she's not yeah. invincible. It's like, no, she actually was. This stuff didn't really touch her. Yeah. Probably if an He's Asgardian got... was holding that stuff, you know, they could, probably could do some damage. Yeah, some thugs. And, and then, you know, again, the the needle, like, you know, now now we're seeing the, the, the story plot kind of come into play. Right? Someone's trying to steal her blood, um, and, we, and we don't know who it is or what's going on. So I think we're going to start seeing that villain come into play and, and see what's kind of going on here. But, um... Overall, again, these are breezy episodes. They're very, very fun. They don't take themselves too seriously, and honestly, it, it's just it's just great to kind of kind of experience it uh, throughout. Um, yeah. Literally, the, and I knew Megan the Stallion was in this episode because uh, from stuff I read a while ago, I was trying to keep it secret. And um, uh, my wife was like, "Oh, she's not going to be in the episode. You know, they're just going to reference her." And then she's like in the the courtroom, <laughs> uh, and she's like, "Oh, I'm like, oh, yep, yep that that was her one thing." And then the because I'd already seen if you don't watch this show obviously that end credit scene was on fucking line everywhere uh, mm-hmm. on Thursday, so when we got to that she was like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "Yep, they actually filmed them doing the scene here and and ran CGI to it." So it's just a great time. Like, like I said, I'm having a, a blast with She Hulk, um, and you know I'm excited for next week's cameo, whoever that may or may not be <laughs> along the way. Cameo of the week. Yeah, we'll uh, Ex- we'll stay tuned. We'll report back. Next week, alongside of the D23 Expo, which will probably yes. have more Disney Plus uh, Marvel news at that as well. Yeah, yeah, probably. Pro- I mean, we don't know when the next show is, do we, for Disney Plus? This is technically the last Marvel Disney Plus show with the date. So Yeah, um, you're just going to have to deal with Andor uh, until you get your mm-hmm. next nerdy nerdy uh, mm-hmm. uh, thing that you chew your teeth. That's right. Buckle up, buckaroos. We're in for a long fall. All right, well, that's been the episode for the week, Mike. Uh, let's get out of here. Uh, enjoy the rest of our Labor Day before we have to go back to work tomorrow. But, uh, but if people know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at, man? They can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N, or Instagram at Valdan87. Um, I'm also trying to post stuff on Rad Retro Bros, B-R-O-S, on Instagram. So you can catch out one of my unboxing videos I put on there. So I'm trying some new stuff. Uh, if people know more about the show, where they can uh, listen, I, I, we don't, when's our next review? Like, I feel like Black Adam maybe coming up? I don't know. We haven't had one in a minute. Um, where can they find all our good episodes at? Yeah, this is where I keep it uh, short and sweet because, like I said at the top of the show, it is hot as hell out here in Southern California. So I'll just say visit SuperheroSlate.com. We're on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love love to listen to podcasts. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can get merch, SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love our super fans. If you want to be a super fan of the show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy. We'll be here every week, folks. That's right. We'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe.